everyone, welcome to the 2020 Make It Big Conference. I'm your host, Beatrice Esse with Big Commerce, and today I'm here with Matthew Coles, Account Director at Modelic. Matthew, thank you so much for joining us. So excited to have you here today virtually. Um, I'd love to have you kick things off by introducing yourself and telling us how you got started in e-commerce. All right, well, I appreciate you having me. Um, we got started in e-commerce about eight years ago. We have had a design studio here in Salt Lake City for over two decades, and we started doing interface design for um, a group who was doing the development on the other side. But then we saw the opportunity to hire our own development staff and to build complete e-commerce sites from concept through design and development um, right here in our office. So oftentimes business owners consider themselves tech savvy, but they may not be an expert when it comes to coding or creating custom website designs. So what are three to five things that they need to understand um, about e-commerce development? It helps always um, to have some technical skill, but we've completed successful projects where our clients would say, hey, we are not very technical at all. So some of the things that are most important to keep in mind is, will this site or, and this platform grow with me as my business grows? Can it support the kind of design and interaction that we want on the site? Is it easy to administrate? Especially if you're not very technical, you need to understand what you need to do on the admin side to um, fulfill and ship and, and you know, run your business uh, through e-commerce. And then um, probably the most important thing you need to decide is how will this sell my product? And so how can this site be engaging enough to capture somebody's attention and have them hit that order button. Another point is that, um, and it's, it's vital, is that your site is secure um, because you can have a beautiful site um, that works really well, but if someone can hack into it and get into that private information of your customers, then all's lost. So security is probably utmost importance because it, it makes sure that uh, your customers are safe when they shop with you. So for those people who are not, let's say, code savvy, I'll say myself included, um, what's the difference between hiring a developer and hiring an agency? I think it's, a, it's an important thing as you're looking at building a new site or rebuilding your site. Um, you can find good developers all around the world. They're very talented uh, people. What you get with an agency that you might not get with just a single developer or a couple developers is project management, someone that can walk you through all the steps um, to get your, your uh, store from idea to actually uh, you know, a fully functioning site. Um, you also get some strategy from an agency. They've built many sites before. They know what works, uh, what doesn't work. You get a lot more quality assurance. A single developer will say, hey, this works for me on my machine in my uh, environment, but an agency will usually have a QA process where you can go through, they'll go through the whole site with a number of tools to make sure that it works. The other thing that an agency can give that a single developer can't give is if that developer gets sick, um, goes on vacation, decides they want to shift careers, decides they're too busy. Um, all of these are examples, real life examples that have happened when people have called us and say, hey, we had a developer, everything was going good, and then they disappeared or, you know, they got sick or their wife or something like that. So an agency will have some redundancy and they'll have more than one developer so that your site can continue to be built if one of the developers has a personal issue. And how should businesses determine which projects they can tackle on their own versus the projects where they'll probably need a little direction and help from an agency? Right, that's a great example. It depends on how custom you want your site to be and what functionality you want for your site. Because you can certainly, using Big Commerce, for example, you can pick a template and if it looks really nice and it's similar to what you want your site to look like, you may be able to get 
you know, maybe 90, 95, maybe even 100% there without engaging a developer. But all of the clients that we have, they have some, some very specific requirements that would require a, of an experienced developer and an experienced developer on the BigCommerce platform in it to be able to achieve those things. So the best thing that clients can do, even before they uh, approach us or other agencies or developers, is to plan out the site as fully as they can and to try to have a list of those questions that they're not sure about. And um, if you have a really fleshed out site map and a really good idea of what makes your product interesting and you know what, what will help it sell, then as you approach a developer or an agency, they should be able to take you the rest of the way if, a, if an off the shelf um, template doesn't work for you. And with all of that said as well, is it possible for businesses to create their own dynamic site without having in-house IT or development staff? If you don't adhere to a template very closely, then you will want to engage with the developer or an agency to um, you know, maybe tie your site into, if you have an ERP system or a special shipping system, or the way you take payments is a little bit different, or you have affiliate programs. All of these are areas where it may get a little sticky for you to go on your own. And so that's probably the time where you want to engage with a developer or an agency. So let's shift gears a little bit and talk about page builders. Page builders are a pretty hot topic, I would say, especially for smaller businesses um, or for those who really just aren't tech or code savvy, if you will. Um, walk me through a little bit about what page builders are and how they can really help businesses. Website page builders are a little bit new to e-commerce. There's um, an app in big commerce that some of our clients have used before and now big commerce has unveiled their own page builder and so what this allows you to do as a client if you want to change your home page and you're not um, proficient at code it allows you to rearrange those things on the page without knowing um, any code it's uh, simply a drag and drop um, interface where you can say, hey, I wanna switch this banner out for something different, and I wanna put different text over here in this column, and I wanna put a photo over here. And so what it gives you is the um, ability to make some of those content changes, which keeps your site fresh and can um, introduce new products or sales um, without doing any code. Um, within, like with anything, there are some drawbacks sometimes it doesn't work exactly the way that you hoped it would on mobile because the uh, page builder has to kind of guess how that's gonna condense down to a tablet or a mobile device. And sometimes there's just unintended consequences on, on certain layouts. But if you go to your agency or developer and say, hey, I would really like to use page builder on this specific page, this landing page or this home page." then they should be able to help you construct it in a way where you can drag and drop and do all those things on your own because um, that's the best way if you wanna keep costs down and manage a lot on your own without a lot of technical knowledge, they, they can really come in handy. Um, there's another way to do it using headless commerce, which we'll talk about maybe a little bit later. So let's actually go ahead and dive into that right now. Um, what is the scoop on headless commerce and how can it help teams who are um, less code savvy? One common way of using headless is um, combining WordPress with BigCommerce. BigCommerce actually has created a plugin that you can use in WordPress that allows you to leverage all the functionality of BigCommerce but also keep the functionality of WordPress. So say you already have a WordPress site and you've been um, wanting to start selling things, you could use your existing WordPress site, which you're already used to changing content without knowing code and building new pages and, and posts with your blog. Um, then you can plug in uh, the BigCommerce uh, plugin, then you have that extra functionality where you can then sell 
in a very secure and safe way and then have all that account management tools available to you while still using your WordPress site. So Headless is exciting because it's not just WordPress. You can use it with Drupal and, and other content management systems. And so if your staff already has some ability with the admin of any of those type of um, platforms, then you can add big commerce to it and be able to sell pretty quickly. Um, there are some intricacies, of course, with, with syncing products and the way the products show up on the, on the site. And that's something you probably want to have an agency help you with. But it really has, over the last year or so, opened up a lot of possibilities, both in the ways that we can design and also maintain and administer a site for people who are not particularly technical. So even when businesses choose best-in-class solutions, put in a bunch of hard work to have everything set up correctly, roadblocks and glitches and little hiccups can still happen. So what can business owners and e-commerce managers do to ensure that they always have support on call when they need it? Right. I think it's, it's really important. If you build your site with a developer or with an agency and you guys get along and you still are talking at the end of the build, which you hope you are. I mean, we take that relationship really seriously here at Modelic. We feel like we're partners with our clients because we know if they're successful, they're going to want to have us on hand to build new features in the future or um, help them bug fix or you know, create new pages or a few years down the line, maybe say, hey, we want to go to a new design or we're selling a new kind of product or we're going to sell B2B, business to business now. And so I would um, highly encourage you to have a, uh, an agreement with your developer or your agency so that after launch, you have a few hours every month where you can address some of these things that come up because they always do as self-sufficient as big commerce is and other e-commerce plat e platforms, things come up because payment gateways change their rules. Uh, some of the apps will change over time. You'll, you'll want to add new functionality. And so there's, there's really not uh, many sites that you just put up and let sit. So, the best way to do that is to become very proactive with your developer or your agency. And on the other hand, if you don't, you're not getting along with your um, agency, but you somehow get to launch, then during that last part, you should probably try to reach out through the big commerce network or um, through referral to find someone that can take your site and continue to service it. Because if your staff doesn't have a lot of technical knowledge, it's just a matter of when that you'll need somebody quickly because people aren't able to check out or you know something that will bring your your business to a standstill so and we've done that as well it's a little bit more difficult for us to pick up someone a site that somebody else has built but we've been able to do that successfully as well um, and then be able to service that client and uh, continue to improve their website over time so when working with any partner, it's really, really important to understand the approach and the timeline. So what can business owners expect when working with a developer or agency? When, when projects go sideways, it's usually because the agency has one set of expectations and the client has another. So I always think it's as much, if, even if you have a previous relationship with the developer or the agency, it's really important to get it in writing, just so you have something that you can refer to and fall back on if, if things you know, start going awry. And so as much as possible, if you can get that um, agreement in writing of what you expect to happen and the agency says, this is what we're going to do, this is what we rely on the client to do, then it makes everybody uh, feel like they're on the same page. When, yeah, things go wrong, it's because, oh, I thought you guys were going to do that. And the other side says, oh, I thought you were going to do that. And it, and you never want to get in an adversarial relationship, of course, because you want to be pulling the same direction. You want to be on the same team um, working. So um, timeline is important. Um, 
what some people consider fast is other people consider slow. So when you get to the start of a project, it's good to have a calendar and a, and a schedule with the uh, caveat that things almost always come up in development, whether you add some extra items to the scope of the project or something unexpected happens in development, you need to be a little bit flexible on that and your agreement should probably have some contingencies on what happens when you run into unexpected issues. Um, but if you don't have a calendar at all, then it will always kind of get pushed to the, the back burner. So you need to have a, a realistic schedule and um, it's always important to have that broken into um, sprints or, or sections that are easy for you as a non-technical person to understand that they're done. So, you know, say the, the first part of a project is design. You know, after three weeks, we say we should be done with design. So at that point, you should be expecting to sign off and say, hey, the design is just the way I want it. Let's move to the next phase, which would be development. So I know you mentioned Agile right there. Um, I actually used to work in an Agile environment as well with a development team. Um, we had actually gone from Waterfall to Agile, so it's a topic that I always love to dive into. Um, but walk us through a little bit about the difference between Waterfall and Agile and really what it means for the development timeline. Yeah, so that can extend into post-launch when you're working in a retainer type uh, situation. Um, so. What that is, is, is you want to, you don't necessarily need one part of the project also to be done before starting another. Like you can maybe QA one part of the project while developers are still working on another. And when you start a project, one, one portion of it you might have thought was more important, but as things have gone along, we say, hey, the priority needs to um, be with uh, this point B instead of point A. And so you need to, Agile is a, a framework where you continually assess what's in front of you and decide what's important and move on that. You can also decide what can happen concurrently and what needs to wait until, um, you know, for, for design, at a start of a project, for instance, the developers can be setting up their project base and be working on the base template while the designers are figuring out exactly how the site is gonna look. And so that's concurrent, so it's happening at the same time. But before you can do quality assurance tests on one part of a project or another, of course, it needs to be at least uh, a certain way done before you can actually say, hey, this, this works. And so um, some things need to wait for others, but other things can happen at the same time. And you can also, um, be flexible enough to push certain parts of the project ahead of another's if the situation warrants. Many agencies and developers work in a phased approach, um, which means that it's really, really important for businesses to have their list of must-haves and nice-to-haves um, pretty clearly laid out. Um, what can businesses do to really create that list of must-haves and nice-to-haves so that it really works in unison with that phased approach? Yeah, no, that's a great point. And it's, some, it's a conversation we have with all of our clients. Um, depending if they have an unlimited budget, then put it all in there and let's just go. But I, I haven't met that client yet. Everybody's got a, a budget, of course, and they need to have some sort of a <clears throat> return on their investment. And so um, what often works uh, for clients as they create these requirement lists. That's kind of the first step in any project. Say, these are all the things we need. And so those things, of course, are vital to the project and they need to be included. But then there's like, oh, we saw this other really cool widget on this other site. That'd be cool to have. And also we'd love to do an affiliate program, but we've never done one. Um, so that would be fun to have. And then, you know, a year down the line, we have we're gonna start selling B2B. And so we need kind of a, a different program for that, different pricing, different pages. And so as we look at that, what we would come back to them and say, okay, we see all the things that you need. Let's talk about that as phase one and that will get you to launch where you have a functioning, fantastic website. Um, and then let's start working on phase two where we can you know, include your affiliate program, and your super cool widget 
And um, that will get you, you know, maybe that takes a month or two. And then let's do phase three and let's really dig into your B2B offerings and how you want that to look on your um, site and how you want it to function in the back end. And, and then you can go from there. So doing a phased approach um, sometimes makes things a little bit more palatable for you as a client. And also it can get you a more defined bid. Otherwise, the, you might get something back from the developer where it's a really wide range. And you're like, hey, I want to be near the low end of this range. But if you have a pretty specific definitions, at least uh, we here at Modelic, we can give you a pretty um, cemented bid, um, knowing what we know from other builds that we've done. But doing a phased approach is smart because it also will get your product to market faster. So you can launch your website and then worry about, you know, the super cool widget and the affiliate program and the B2B stuff. If you wait for all of it at once, you know, you may be a month or two later than you'd like, and you might miss out on those sales that will actually help fund those other projects. And last but not least, for those tuning into this session, what are a few key takeaways you'd like them to walk away with? One thing that we hadn't talked about that's really important for a non-techie, and I'm a non-techie, so I, you know, I was a designer for many years, and then I needed to understand what development is. I'm still not someone who's going to sit down and, and write lines of code. Um, but what I've found is most important for a client and for us as an agency is to explain things in a way that you can understand. So say you're meeting with your developer and you're talking about the site and they start talking API and handlebars and JSON and using all these terms that you have no idea what they are. Don't be embarrassed and um, don't be shy about saying, I don't understand what you just said. Please uh, explain that in a way that I can understand. Or, you know, you get to a pro the place in the project and it's really slowing down and they start saying, hey, the JavaScript is this and that, and you're like, I don't understand what that means. Please explain it. Um, that may stretch some of your uh, developers or agencies, but they have the obligation to help you understand why things are going that way without you knowing how to code. And so I think that's really important for you to take that opportunity to say, hey, let's slow down. I need to understand that because Sooner or later, that's going to come back and, and bite you if you don't understand what your agency or developer is saying. Um, on the other hand, you do have a responsibility, I think, to become as educated as you can so that you can uh, better understand um, what they're talking about. So, for instance, on BigCommerce, there's a, there are some videos and some things to help you understand how the platform works and how sites on the platform work. And, I would definitely take advantage of, of those. Some of our clients also take advantage of their reps. They have launch um, specialists and other uh, support specialists, especially in the enterprise offering, and they can help you understand better how the, the platform works uh, using plain language, and then that will help you with your actual, actual project. Um, the other thing that we talked a little bit about that's, that's really important is just that relationship. Um, get, getting to that point of trust with your developer or your agency where you can um, set forth your expectations and then um, be flexible enough at times, but also be firm. And then you should have a good working relationship. And then you feel like, hey, I've got a real partner in this. and so. Some of our clients we've had for the whole eight years that we started doing e-commerce through multiple platforms um, because we have that, that sense of trust where they know that we're gonna do the best we can for them. And they're also not shy about speaking up when uh, we haven't done our best or they, they think that we, we may have forgotten them or, or something like that. But they, you know, instead of letting it build to an explosion point, we have those conversations, whether we're launching something new or not, or just working on a retainer, we have conversations every month of, you know, how are things going? What's most important? What's working? What's not? So throughout a build with your developer and your agency, you should have check-ins, I would say at least once a week, so that 
things don't get lost in the shuffle and that you then you can build that kind of rapport with each other where you have that trust and you can speak to each other plainly about what you think is working really well and what needs more attention. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Matthew, for joining us today and being part of the 2020 Make It Big Conference. That was a great session with Matthew Coles, account director at Modelic. Be sure to engage with us on social media using the hashtag MakeItBigConf and share what you've learned. If you're looking for more insights, be sure to tune in to more Make It Big Conference sessions by heading over to www.bigcommerce.com slash makeitbig.